Interesting article from Chris Yorman in the Nine newspapers today, writing, let's raise two cheers for boring government. For the first time in nearly a decade, we are heading towards the end of the year without speculating whether the Prime Minister will survive until Christmas. Now, despite that analysis, uh, I don't know whether he has probably given the politicians a reason to fire up because of that analysis, but politics was not boring today. We had this shocking blow-up from the Deputy Prime Minister, Michael McCormick, today. Have a look at this. Uh, a $10 million initial contribution... I don't know why you're yelling so much. This is helping all country communities, Member for Hunter. It's time you came to the Member table and just behaved yourself occasionally. There are country people doing it tough. And you won't, you won't ever stop yelling out at them. You should behave yourself. You're a disgrace. You're De Deputy Prime disgrace Minister you know will you resume are. his seat. Deputy Prime Minister will resume his seat. You scared me. <laughs> Steve George Artis, you're up the back of the bus. But you would have heard every word and it would have pricked your ears, I would have thought. I, I did hear uh, a lot of it. Well, all of it was so loud, but I thought someone was going to phone the uh, social behaviour hotline of the AFL. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, <laughs> the, the way they were uh, going on. But look, you know, behaviour like that's not good for Parliament. Um, obviously, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister McCormick, uh, who's a pretty good bloke, but I get on pretty well with him, um, was upset by something that Joel Fitzgibbon said. Um, Joel came back at him. Uh, but it is fiery, and um, who said politics was boring? It is a, it is a fiery place. It's a place uh, of, um, you know, ex extreme uh, I ideals and ideology where people will battle to the very end to have their view heard. Um, and uh, today was uh, no different. A bit louder, but no different. A bit louder, all right. Broke the decibel barrier. Carolyn, let me, let me ask oh, you this. I certainly did. Th these, are two these are two country people talking like they may speak if they had an argument in the local <laughs> Royal Hotel. <coughs> what if, what if a woman was the one doing the heckling? I wonder whether Michael McCormick would have done that. That's a good question. <laughs> I, yeah, it depends, I guess, how loud the heckling was. You'd hope that, look, you'd react exactly the same way and that a woman wouldn't get singled out for any more precious treatment, but... Perhaps. But here yes. is Mr Bland. This is the bloke that most of us He's talk so about. He's so meek-mannered, especially compared to his yes. predecessor, Barnaby Joyce. Yes. He's a real Barnaby today. Yes. They, they've been all saying, why doesn't he fire up? Why doesn't he get into the debate and get into the argument? Well, no-one has fired up like he has in 2019. No. No, he's certainly set a new standard. I mean... Uh, and Chris Yulman had just written this piece saying how boring politics was, and then this happened. Mm. But, you know, the old curse may live in interesting times, yeah. I think, yeah. you know. You, you were busy today. You didn't see Question Time, but you knew this happened. Yeah. When you see I, it in living colour, it's different, isn't it? I was absolutely stunned by that, Chris. I hadn't realised that it was quite... I hadn't seen the grab, I hadn't seen it live, and I hadn't realised it was quite so <coughs> massive. And, you know, I was thinking about this because... The other night when the Brexit debate was going on, I was up late here watching that on TV at home and thinking, my gosh, these guys in Britain, they've got really such a fiery and interesting question time. And then here we have this. You know what I think, though, the big mistake was for the deputy PM? I think it's OK to fire up. It's OK to yell. But what he lacked there was any sort of wit. And, you know, when Paul Keating in the old days yeah. would fire up or Peter Costello in yep. the old days yep. would fire up, there would be that real element of wit and cleverness to it. And, and ridicule, and ridicule. And ridicule and turning it around and it was a fun sort of sledge. And this just sounded like, you know, if you were in the pub and you heard that going on down the bar, you'd think, oh, geez, it's about to be on, you know? <laughs> exactly. I mean, if he acts like that in public, in that public sphere... I wonder what he does when he gets the National Party caucus together and starts to tell them that they're stabbing him in the back, or what he does on the farm when one of his kids crashes the tractor. Well, it's, it's pretty funny because everybody has said, as Caroline said, the reputation of this guy is that he's just <laughs> Mr Colourless Bland, and then maybe it's, he's taking it to heart, but taking it to heart too much in the wrong way. Well, then, later this afternoon, after question time, uh, my mate at Macquarie Radio, Ben Fordham, decided to ask both men whether they'd like to come on and continue the debate. Have a look at this. Michael, you can. Okay. I'm happy to have a cup of tea with you any day, Joel. You, you, you completely lost it in question time today when all I was interjecting with was why don't you actually do something? And you lost your shit because you are under pressure from well, rural no communities. Clear, Joel. Yes, I, are, I'll you, always lose it when, when we're are, talking about rural communities. You are under pressure. 
Christie, and let me speak. You are under pressure from rural communities because you have been exposed. They are coming to realise you have done two-fifths of bugger all for them with respect to this drought. So he gave as good as he got, really. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I mean, look, politics is a robust place, and generally... Uh, it's pretty well behaved. I mean, New South Wales Parliament has a reputation mm. for being much worse and it's called the bear pit mm. and the Speaker at the moment, Jonathan O'Day, wants to reform the way it works and wants people to behave. But let's face it, as journalists, it's far more interesting mm. to mm. see when things get fired up. It, yeah, and they were both coming from a passionate place of care for the bush and so that can't be a bad thing, you know? And if, if you're putting pressure on the Deputy Prime Minister to do more for the bush, well, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna store all that, he's at least going to store it. Whether he thinks he's doing the right thing at the moment or not, he'll store it and he'll remember what that was all about, which is any colour, colour. We're f we don't want bland politicians. <laughs> Michael McCormick, I take all the private criticism that I delivered to you. You must have uh, been hearing me from where you are.